Good Monday morning. You know, it's always a good thing to sort of reacquaint ourselves with the issues that can prevent scammers from taking money from us. And one of the big places that scammers like to go is with the IRS. Use the sledgehammer of the IRS to get you to give them money. So how do we figure out the difference between a scam and the IRS? Well, let's take a look at that. The IRS says that email phishing is the big thing. You get emails from people saying that you owe the IRS money, but here's what you need to know. If you have a tax bill, the IRS usually starts any contact by mailing you. That's snail mailing you a bill. The IRS does not email you. It does not request any personal or financial information by email. The IRS will sometimes initiate contact in person, either at your home or at your business. In that case, always demand to see proper identification. If you received an email, phishing letter, do not click on any of the links or respond in any way. That's vitally important. You should save it and then send it on to the IRS. Now, there are also phone scams where they make it look like they're calling from the IRS. They ghost the number, but they are not. The IRS does not call you first. They snail mail. The IRS and its authorized collection agencies will not leave pre-recorded urgent or threatening messages on your phone, will not have local police arrest you, revoke your driver's license, or even deport you. Ignore any calls demanding immediate payments, particularly if they want a prepaid debit card, a gift card, or a wire transfer. Simply hang up. We have more reading on this on the Money Monday page at clickondetroit.com.